What is up, soul family? It has been a hot minute again. Um, I just got done working out. Please excuse all of this. Uh, you're gonna hear my dogs playing in the background, but it feels like the biggest downloads kind of come through during the workouts. And I just wanted to hop on here quick and just tap in for another little hello from heaven, another little self-empowerment reminder. Uh, this freaking world right now is still going, just going through it. For individuals like you and I, it is very important important to remember that we are not alone. There are so many souls just like us making the same choices we are, thinking the same thoughts that we are, <clears throat> and we're placed specifically around the planet in order to awaken those around us. So you're probably not going to be surrounded by many souls who are like you or making choices like you at all. Uh, you might be the only one or maybe just you and your partner or just depending on where you're at. Um, and that's okay. First of all, you're allowed to feel that loneliness. You're allowed to feel that confusion that you're allowed to embrace and nurture that part of you that sometimes just wants to give up and give in and just be normal and just go with the flow of what everyone else is doing. Uh, rather than going with the flow of what your heart's telling you to do, what your divinity, what, what your sovereign empowerment identity is telling you to do. Uh, we have free will on this planet and we get to use our free will to choose what we want to do. Uh, certain individuals like myself and probably most of you watching these videos, we use our free will to choose divine will, which is basically allowing ourselves to know and be okay with the fact that we don't have to be in control of life, that we are incarnated on one of the most hellish times on earth and that we're still moving through it and that we're still gonna be okay and that we don't have to know what it looks like in order to be okay. We don't have to see the future and know the timelines in order for it to be okay, in order for us to make our choices. We're just completely content with making our own sovereign, empowering choices every now moment based on what our heart's telling us, telling us to do, based on what our intuition's telling us what to do, based on how much we love ourselves. So I know that I've been kind of MIA on here. It's mostly just because social media is super hard for me to want to be on right now. There's just so much polarity and I don't my free will is I just don't partake in the polarity. I'm not saying anyone's right versus wrong. I'm saying for me, I know my choices, what serves myself. And besides that, it's just like you do you. So it's super hard even for what I do for a living um, and with my readings and working with clients is to tell people what to do or to help people and show them the answers like that sometimes is hard that sometimes is hard for me right now because and you might be experiencing this as well because everyone's realizing whether it's conscious or unconscious there's parts of us that are truly authentically understanding that this is a self-empowering journey no one is here to save anyone else no one is here to be the one savior we are all saving ourselves we are all doing this for ourselves Eventually, when you do it for yourself enough and you choose yourself first and you love yourself enough, it shifts into service. It shifts into helping others do that as well, which is um, where a lot of us are currently at. If we are leading from this divine feminine or masculine consciousness of sovereignty right now, you may be where I'm at of realizing it feels like a pause, but there's still this fire burning inside of us of creating change of making a difference so what i'm hopping on to remind us all to do that my higher self has really been guiding me to do is to keep turning within i know you've heard that so many times but to get really clear in your relationship with yourself um another thing that's been going on since i've been mia on here is deepening into my self-love relationship how authentically in love i can be with myself um, we might all say, I love myself. I'm proud of myself. Like I look good and that's amazing. But why there's this pause happening right now is because we're being asked to deepen even more into that, to really authentically, when you look at yourself in the mirror or you look into your eyes and you see your soul, whether you're looking at your physical body, your mental body, your spiritual body, your emotional body, just pick one of those bodies right now. 
authentically feel the love. Feel where you're at in relationship to that part of you. Um, there's no right or wrong here. So for example, for me, just being vulnerable with examples, for me, I was working lately on my physical um, my physical body in regards to how, what's my relationship with my body? How do I love my body? Um, and I, I came to this realization, I love my body so much, but there was more love there. There was more love to be had there. My body felt like a best friend. It didn't feel like I was in love with her. I was in love with it. And I had to get real with that and see and think and feel, is it important for me, important for me to be authentically in love with myself? And that was just an immediate big yes. And so I had to get real like, okay, what is, what does my body need? Just like with a physical partner in your life, you need to treat your body with that same respect or even more so because it's you. This is how change starts. It starts with you. And so I will be coming out. That's a new course I'm making is a self-love, um, course creating and deepening into your relationships with yourself on all levels because that's really where we create that strong foundation that strong empowerment to take the next step and be okay with whatever happens after we take that ne next step so whether that be speaking up about your truth or saying yes to a new job or saying yes to moving away from a job or wherever whatever your next step is in this physical life if you feel confused or lost or not sure what to do or frustrated or you feel this stagnant energy somewhere inside of you which is basically what we're all going through right now in one way or another there's something deeper inside of you trying to get your attention and it's time to create a relationship with that it's time to create a relationship with the wounded parts of you as well I know we've all heard this so many times, but there's a reason there's this little pause right now because we need to grow this foundation. The bigger and stronger we grow our foundations as individuals, the more they're going to connect like puzzle pieces to other souls that are doing the same thing. And then it's going to create this massive quantum shift for the entire collective. So don't worry about the collective right now. Please keep focusing on you. What parts of you are you not loving deep enough? What parts of you are asking for your attention. Is it your physical body, your emotional, your mental, your spiritual body? Is it a wounded part of you? Is it one of your inner children coming up and being like, pay attention to me. I'm not, I don't have any more patience anymore. That's been happening for me too. Um, there's just so many parts of us. And another thing I know that sounds like a lot is we don't need to do all of this at once. Just choose one and start there. Make a commitment to yourself because the other forces out there right now, you could call them, that are trying to make choices for us, do not want us to make our own choices. They do not want us to be happy or healthy or functional or alive or sovereign or self-empowering. Um, they just don't want any of that for us because they know as soon as we choose ourselves, as soon as we trust ourselves, we do not look for anything outside of ourselves anymore to make a choice for us. And that makes them lose their power. Don't ask me why there's forces out there. I had that question the other day, like, why are they doing this? Like, I don't know. Why do people kill people? Why do people torture people? I don't know, but they do. It's happening. It's real. Do you want to sit back and watch or do you want to do something about it now? That doesn't mean get angry and go attack and try to kill them because that's just playing their game. That's what they want. That feeds that darkness. What they don't want is for you to be like, what parts of me are getting triggered right now? And what parts of me do I need to really authentically freaking look at and love more? How can I create a deeper, authentic relationship with my emotions? When anger and frustration are present, do not push them away. Do not think you're doing anything wrong. Please talk to them. Label it for what it is. Look at the, feel the emotion. Label it, ask. Just be curious. Like, what is this? And you might just feel frustration. And be like, okay, instead of pushing it away or trying to um, bring up another emotion to cover it, it's doing its job. It's not there to harm you. It's there to talk to you. It's there to show you what parts of you are trying to get your attention. So look at it. Be like, why am I frustrated? And you might not have the answer. It is not about being logical right now. What's happening is this entire collective is going through a divine feminine awakening. Feminine energy, whether you're female or masculine, 
um, or female or male, it doesn't matter. We all have this feminine energy inside of us. This feminine energy works with emotions and images. It does not work with logic or with words or with thoughts. So how, what parts of your feminine want to nurture these aspects of you that are trying to get your attention? So back to that frustration, feel the frustration or that anger and then say, okay, what do you want from me? Not like a word, unless it wants you to journal, like journal it out just to get out physically into the physical, what you're feeling. It'll help that ego part of you be okay with what you're feeling. And then ask that feminine, invoke that feminine part of you that's always been there to come forth, which is nurturing and loving and creative and see if she wants you to move. See if she wants you to scream, scream into a pillow if you need to. It doesn't matter. Be creative. Like what part of this frustration needs to move through you in order to be expressed and seen. It's probably most likely another good way to work with these denser emotions is to really bring up situations that you haven't been wanting to look at that may have happened in your past. So think of like one person that's hurt you, that you just don't have good feelings towards. You're safe to feel that. If you immediately just felt this little ping and trigger towards me saying that, you got to look at that part. That's perfect. That's beautiful that you're feeling that because that part of you is like, oh, I'm still here. Awesome. Like, let's talk. They want to talk to me. Let that part of you, that situation come back into your mind's eye with an image, not with a logic of this is what happened. Like create the scenario again and watch that situation happen and feel your emotions because there might be emotions that happened during that situation or that confrontation with someone else that you felt that you didn't like to feel because those emotions may have been uncomfortable and you pushed them down. Well, guess what? What's happening right now is all of those emotions are coming back up and they will not stop and they will keep projecting outside situations happening in your life to keep getting your attention that, hey, this emotion is still inside of you and you need to create a relationship with it. Because guess what? Frustration is never going to go away. We could get frustrated every single day for the rest of our lives and be Buddha meditating on the Himalayan mountains and we can still get frustrated. It's not about getting rid of these emotions. It's about having a relationship with them. So when they appear, you understand how to communicate and express them and respond to them in a healthy way that serves yourself and serves everyone else in regards to their highest good. It is not about getting rid of your human. We are human. We are here. Uh, whether you're a hybrid like myself, it doesn't matter. Like it's very easy to try to pop out a body and just remember your past or parallel lifetimes. We're not living. We're not playing that game anymore. We're playing the game of the hum human life. And what the game is, is working with the emotions, feeling them. And forgiveness is going to be that, that next step that will naturally come. Because what happens when you authentically create a relationship with yourself is you honor your divinity. You love yourself so much as that God creator that you are. That you were innately given all of the same qualities and empowerments of source. Um, when you honor that and you authentically understand that, and that's going to come differently for everyone. Um, again, it starts with self-love and working and re creating relationships with all parts of you. But when you do that, you love yourself so much and it's not coming from a place of ego. That's the next step. And some people looking from the outside at someone who loves themselves a lot, if they don't love themselves, they're going to think that that person's egotistical and they're not because when you love yourself from a very um, authentic place um, of just remembering who you are and who you've always been, you, there's no part of ego that's in that because you understand that every single other person has that ability or that quality inside of them as well. So you're not thinking I'm better than everyone else because I'm this beautiful and this strong and this capable and this intelligent and this feminine and this creative. Like I love myself so much. And when you love yourself, you don't look at that as egotistical. Do you, does that make sense? That's super important. So this isn't going to be an overnight process. It can be, but it's uh, it comes down to free will. It comes down to, are you willing to make a commitment to yourself to set aside five minutes, start with five minutes a day for two weeks of a self-love practice of remembering a situation that brought up emotions that you didn't like and creating a relationship with that. Um, this it will also, when you start really consciously working with this self-love and creating relationships with yourself, 
you're gonna feel bipolar <laughs> because you're gonna realize how many emotions you have. That's okay because what's happening is your emotions are feeling safe to be seen and expressed. So you might feel super happy and you're working with that happiness. Even when you feel good emotions, still create a relationship with it. Teach your body because your body's separate from you. Again, that's another part of you that you need to create a relationship with, like authentically loving your body because it will work for you. Um, it's always been working for you. We're not asking it to, but it always is. But when you start working with it, that's where the magic happens. Um, Oh, I just forgot what I was getting at with that. But again, just working with your emotions, working with, oh, that's going to bug me. When I rewatch this, I'll know what I was trying to say. Um, but again, it just comes down to self-love. It comes down to commitment to yourself. It comes down, oh, bipolar, thank you, is all these emotions are feeling safe to be seen. So you might feel really happy. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's coming back. Um, so you're going to feel three ladybugs just landed on my window. <laughs> they're here. Uh, your create a relationship with your happiness as well. Create a relationship with your joy as well. Give your body permission to memorize at a cellular level, what true authentic happiness feels like and is expressed like with you, because then your cells are going to recognize happiness and pull more of it to you. That's how the game of life works. That's how this game works. Let's work with it. It's way easier to work with it rather than against it. If, whether you like it or not, the universe is constantly, when I say universe, that's also a thing people might be like, so cliche. I guess no one here is thinking that, but putting yourself compassionately in the eyes of someone who doesn't understand like, or gets triggered by it, the universe provides sentence. What's actually happening is there's that energetic life force. There's that chi. When you look up at a blue sky, you can actually see it. It's these little black dots flying everywhere. And it's like this mold. It's what molds and it's held together by love. By source, it's held together by love. That's how this grid is held together. And it molds around our bodies because our bodies are energy. It's inside of our bodies. And the chi inside of our body, that universal life force energy inside of our body, is also outside of our body because we're the microcosm of the macrocosm. So when at a cellular level, when we tell that chi, that energy, that life force energy inside of us to memorize complete authentic happiness or abundance, then the outside is going to match that. The universe, the chi energy is not naturally doing its job. It is programmed naturally, universal law, to do its job and give us and match to us what we're invoking from inside of us. That's how this game works. So just be conscious of it. Um, whether we're conscious or not of it, that's constantly happening. That is how we're creating this reality. So when you realize that, I don't think a lot of us are actually scared of failure. We're scared of power. We're scared of success. Because when you realize how powerful you truly are and how many divine qualities you were innately given from birth, it's a huge check in with your ego because your ego goes, no, that is a lot of responsibility. That is diving completely head first into the unknown. And I'm not comfortable with that. So guess what? To that part of you, instead of saying, you're right, let's play it small. Let's just keep doing what we know. Let's listen and let other people make choices for us. And but, Or instead of getting mad at that part of yourself, talk to that part of you. Be like, why am I scared of this? Because it's unknown. Okay, so what am I scared of that's going to happen in the unknown? Well, I don't know because it's the, like, you're just going to start having this conversation with yourself. Journal it out. That really helps you get clear about what you're actually thinking versus what your ego's thinking. And then just comfort that part of you. Let that part of you know that it's okay to feel all of your emotions. It's okay to feel your fear, but it's not okay to let those emotions keep you down. That's another thing. You don't have to like this game. You don't have to like it, but you still get to move forward with all of your emotions. Emotions aren't here to stop us or to sabotage us. They're just here to let us intimately feel where we're at with our relationship to life. And then we as a soul who experiences emotions, we are not those emotions. We're experiencing them. Separ we are separate from our emotions. We're just experiencing them. So who we are is that soul part. That soul aspect of ourselves gets to choose with our free or divine will what we want to let these emotions do for us. They're always going to be there. Just how do you want to use them? Does that make sense? Like this is just kind of coming through right now because there's a lot of us that are feeling a lot thinking a lot. We're really popping back and forth. We feel bipolar, but we're kind of okay with that, but we don't really have conscious um, 
attention towards what we want to do with our bipolar feelings. So it's like, just first of all, be okay with all of that. Be okay that you feel like you're getting pulled back and forth. Pull your energy back consciously to you. Feel what it's like when you realize where your energy is spread thin. Pull it back, bring it into your heart and sh be curious just one step out of a time. Like, what does my heart want to show me today? What part of me do I need to create a deeper relationship with today? It's not about feeding this dark agenda that's going on. It's not about whether you received the V or not. It's not about whether someone else did or not. It's not about making people choose and think the same way you do. It's about what makes you feel your best in this moment from a true authentic state, not to prove yourself to anyone, but to prove yourself to you, to love yourself more. Those parts of us have never gone away. They've just been really covered up by all of this programming that's being shoved at us. So please do not be codependent with your relationship to the outside world because that's falling away. And the more that that falls away, you're going to see people who are very dependent on the outside world to keep them safe. You're going to know that they're dependent on that because they're going to be freaking the frick out. <laughs> they're going to think the world's ending everything's dying. They just are going to hold on with every part of them, whether it's just their pinky fingernail, it's still holding on super tight to the old ways of living. And it, they're scared. And instead of being like, you should be scared, like, yeah, you stay down low, you should feel terrible. Like, no, but also you aren't responsible for pulling them back up. You're just responsible for having compassion not getting more triggered by the fact that they're so dependent on this life because guess what? You used to be at one point too. That's just, that's work. That's what compassion is, is we've intimately experienced what someone else has experienced. Whether we lived in that for a while or not, doesn't matter. It just means that we're all human. We're all experiencing this life in one way or another. And it's not about proving yourself to anyone, but it's about mirroring how, it, how it's going to happen, how you're going to make a change to others and the physical realm on the outside of you is by doing it for yourself first, by mirroring it inside of you so that chi universal life force is authentically being emanated around you. You feel it, you see it energetically and physically that I am love, I am health, I am joy, I am abundance. I'm not saying all of this to prove myself that I'm better than anyone because I know that you are all of those things too. And they're naturally, they have that life force chi inside of them too that's also trying to help them navigate life. And they're going to see you, that chi is going to see you and it's going to mirror, you're going to mirror for them what it looks like to be in this true sovereign state. Okay? <sighs> yeah, that fire's coming through. So I feel like I'm going to be back a lot now um, from more from that higher perspective that I love to live in. Again, uh, duality is dying it did its job we're grateful for it we don't really need it anymore it's just like whoa <laughs> look where duality brought us um it's only going to get crazier before it gets better please understand that everything is still exactly where it's meant to be um the darkness is playing its role very well the light is playing its role very well it's just sometimes you might feel a tug stronger from one end or the other and that's okay too What's going to help you not get whiplash is to just keep calling your energy back and stop relying on the outside to make you feel safe. You're going to feel safe. The world could crumble around you and you're just like, all right, well, I guess I'm chilling here now with no world around me. I'm still loving life. Like it does, it shouldn't affect you what's happening on the outside. It's okay to emotionally feel it because we're human and we're going to have emotions, but to let it pull you down and stop you from moving forward and serving yourself and serving others from a new feminine, creative, authentic, nurturing way, that's what's important. So everything's perfect. Everything's fine. I'm just here to remind you of what's actually happening. You knew all of this already. I didn't need to tell you this. It's just about bringing that remembering to the surface and loving yourself through it. Please feel safe to feel all, all of your emotions right now. Please feel safe to bring up those parts of you and to remember those situations and conflicts that have happened in your life that are still might be happening because you still might be feeling that fear and that anger and that sadness and that grief. And until we forgive ourselves and we forgive others from a true authentic state of sovereign love, then changes won't happen the way that we are intending them to. 
okay. I'm going to leave it at that, but I love you all so much. I will be back soon. Um, and let's have a beautiful rest of our week. Talk to you soon. Bye.